Hello friends. Today I'm going to discuss some of the questions of uh, CSIR uh, part A that is asked in the CSIR 2020 chemical science portion. So this general aptitude portion uh, only going to complete a 10 to 12 questions. And here I'm going to start with a first question which is a technometric problem. So here we can say that a man of height two meter looks at the top of a 40 meter building from some distance and the angle of elevation of his line of sight is 45 degree. When he further moves away from the building by a distance of X, the angle of elevation becomes 30 degree. The X is approximately, so we have to find out the value of X. So what we can see here from this uh, pictorial diagram that uh, this height of the building is 40 meter and the height of the person is two meter and his line of sight is 45 degrees. So from the trigonometric table, we can, uh, we can find out that 10 45 degree is equal to one. So when 10 45 degree is equal to one, so the height of the as 40 minus two, this is the height of the person. So this is the line of sight. So from here, we are going to take the height of the building. So which is uh, 38 meter after decreasing the height of the person from this, as this and this, then should be equal because 10 45 degrees is uh, one and 10 theta is equal to perpendicular by base. So 38 meter is equal to 38 meter. So this base length means the person is now standing 38 meter away from the building. After some time he moves away X distance from the build uh, this wherever he is standing, he moves further X distance. Now the line of sight, he can see at the top of the building with 30 degree inclination. So what is the distance X he moves away? With? So we can see that from the table, 10, 30 degree is equal to one by root three. And if we put the value per perpendicular is still 38 and the, he moves X distance. So perpendicular by base will be 38 plus X. After solving this equation, we will get the 38 into uh, root three. You will get the 65.816. Uh, 65 and this X distance will be uh, reached by subtracting 38 from the 65.86 and we are getting this value which is equal to 20, uh, 28 meter. So the option is 28 meter here. Now moving to the next question. Just a minute. Yeah, this is the Venn diagram problem. Here uh, you can say that it is a class of 84 students in which 29 failed in science, 43 failed in maths and 17 students passed in both. But you have to remember that these 17 students passed in both. So this is a, a different, uh, these 70 students are different from these 29 and 43 uh, students, which are uh, 29 passed in science and um, failed in science and 43 failed in maths. So we have to find out the Venn diagram, which is representing the best match for this data, whatever they have given. So first of all, I want to say that this Venn diagram here you can see that this Venn diagram, these circles represent the number of students failed and the number which is written outside, it is showing the number of past students. So whatever the data given, it is that number of student passed in uh, failed in science is 29. Number of student failed in maths is 43 and total number of student which is passed in both the subjects, it is 17. So from 84 students, we have to decrease the number of students who are passed so that we can get the total number of students failed. So we are getting 67 students who failed in the both science and maths. Now the using the this set theory, we can find that uh, N A union B is equal to N A plus N B minus N intersection B. So here N A is equal to N S means number of students failed in science and M is equal to number of students who is failed in maths. So N A union B, N S union M, N S plus N M minus the N inter intersection M. So here you can say that N M is this, N S is this, and this middle portion is showing the N S intersection M, okay? So what is the union M is this showing the total number of students who are failed. So 67 students are failed. Now the total number of students who failed in science is 29. Total number of students who failed in maths is 43. And total uh, number of students, which is common, you can say that. So after uh, calculating this thing, we find that N S intersection M is five. So this uh, five is showing that these five students failed in both maths and science. 
then this 38 students means 43 student minus 5 because this is the common number so we have to subtract 5 from 43 so we are getting 38 student which is failed only in maths and 24 students which is uh, failed only in science after subtracting 5 from 29 so we are getting this yellow so this Venn diagram means the fourth option is the correct option here now moving to the next question here it is written that while calculating the average of 22 digit numbers digit one of the digits of the one of the number got interchanged because of which the average reduced by 1.8 the difference in the values of uh, digits of the number that were interchanged is so what is the problem is they have calculated an average of two two digit number 22 digit numbers and while calculating this they interchanged one of the digits so one of the uh, two digit number the place has got interchanged so first of all, we have to found, uh, find out the, what is the difference we got due to this mistake. So when the number are interchanged, average is reduced by 1.8. So the total sum, how much it is the difference is 36, means the total value is decreased by 36. So we have to find that original number was 10x plus y, where y is the unit digit and x is the 10 digit. So we are writing this number in this form. And after interchange, we got that y we have interchanged the place and that we are getting 10 y plus x and the difference because this is the difference we got so after we can write this equation 10 x plus y minus 10 y plus x is equal to 36. after calculating this or after simplifying this equation we are getting 9 x minus 9 y is equal to 36. so after you can see this how the approach is this so after calculating we are getting x minus 1 y is equal to 4 and they have, uh, they have asked the difference in the values of the digits because X and Y we are considered as a digit. So the X minus Y we are getting four. So the problem here is we have to find out how much difference we have created by this mistake. Then we have to approach, then we have to write the equation with an interchangeable digit like 10 X plus Y, then we have interchanged the digit 10 Y plus X. Then we have uh, created a equation where difference we have put the value 36 and after solving this equation we got the the difference in the two digit is the four so the correct answer is four here in the next question so how many hollow spheres you can see that the inner radius is one centimeter can be completely filled by transferring water from a completely filled hollow sphere having inner diameter of 20 centimeter now the whatever the the, the question is the question is very simple here the the trick is people overlook this word that it is written diameter rather than say radius so they have uh, done the mistake so it was very simple we have to fill uh, smaller spheres with uh, means uh, from a big sphere we are putting uh, pouring water in the smaller space so how many spheres we are going to be completely filled so the sphere with radius 10 centimeter because it is diameter of 10 centimeter so here it is radius is 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter and volume of sphere with radius one centimeter. So we are we know that the what is the volume four by three pi r cube? R big R means big, ten centi um, bigger uh, sphere and a small r is the smallest sphere. So here we calculated this value and we find out that the thousand SPS can be filled with this bigger sphere. So the option three is the correct option here. Now the other question, it, this question can be a little bit tricky one, whether you can do it by heat train trial method or some logic is there. Okay, so this question is a milk vendor has 50 liter of milk and supplies five liter to every customer. After each transaction, he adds five liter of water. What is the percentage of milk contained in a liter of solution purchased by the fifth customer? So you have to understand that what is going on. So 50 liter of milk, initial uh, value or initial quantity of milk is 50 liter, uh, liter of milk, that is pure. So first candidate is getting 100% pure milk, okay? After that, after supplying five liter, means uh, when he supplied this uh, first person with uh, five liter of milk, he, is, uh, he has 45 liter of pure milk. Then he added five liter of water in it. So now he, has having, uh, he is having 90% of pure milk. So, so second person is getting 90% 90, uh, 90 of pure milk. Similarly, the second person is getting 90% of this milk. Means second person, what is what? The third person is going to get the 90% of pure milk of second person. Then fourth person is going to get the 90% of pure milk of third person. Then fifth person is going to get the 90% of pure milk of fourth person. 
So we can simply write this equation that we can multiply it that 90% four times because the first person is getting 100% pure milk. The second person is getting the 90% of first person. The 90% pure milk of the first person. Then the th third person is getting the 90% of pure milk of second person. Then similarly the fourth and fifth. When you're going to calculate this uh, sum, you're going to get a value that is 60.5.6%, uh, which is the option number one. This is the correct option. Now, next question is the, this is the very simple question. And they have asked that four identical cones with base diameter. So this is the cone with a base diameter is a 10 centimeter. And they are compactly placed inside a box in upright positions. Okay, so in this position, they have kept inside a box. So you, when you are going to look at this uh, four uh, identical cones, it will look like this. And these are their tops. Okay, so these are the tips of this cone. So they have asked the what will be the area of a square formed by the connecting the tips of the cones. When we are going to connect these tips of the cones, we are going to get uh, that this is five centimeter, this is five centimeters. So the area, it is forming a square. Okay, so it is a forming a square and the square is having a side of 10 centimeter. So the area will be the 100 square centimeter. So this is option three will be the correct option. Now the here question is uh, again, a kind of average or mean type question. So the question is uh, an expenditure of rupees 96 was supposed to be shared equally by all the students in a class. Since four students did not contribute the remaining uh, student had to contribute an additional amount of four rupees each. So how many students contributed? Okay, so we have to find the how many students contributed after four, uh, four students they did not contribute it to the sum. Okay, so then 96 was the total contribution and it was done by the X number of students. So their contribution, each contribution will be Y. When the four students, they, are, uh, they denied they were not going to contribute. So X minus four has increased the contribution of every student by four rupees. So we have find from this value that X, Y is 96. You can do it by either way, you can solve it the problem uh, you can take it to multiples of 96 and you can find out which is the best multiple so when if you're going to do this by heat and trial then you will going to find that uh, if you are going to uh, put x is equal to 2 which is not suitable here because if x is equal to 2 you cannot separate this thing then 3 32 if it is 3 then y will be 32 then if you y x is equal to 4 then y will be 24 there are so many other ways this is a heat and trial method and you can check uh, other methods also so and then 6 then 16 8 and 12 so total number of students if you are going to consider 12 then you are going to get the sum or contribution of each student will be 8 after four students came out so eight students were contributing so eight is to be contributing means their contribution is increased by the four. So the eight inch, uh, student is now contributing and their uh, contribution is increased by four unit that is called, uh, that is equal to 12. Okay, so next question. So option is the first one, eight. Here, this is a total uh, reasoning type question. This is, uh, you can see that uh, we have four statement and we have to follow that statement. So first statement says that two of the digits are present in the number 395, but they are not placed correctly. So we have to identify a three digit number. And statement first says that um, it has three digit number and 395 means out of these three digit, two digit are present. So either it can be three, nine or five, but their position are not same. It is not same or it is not placed correctly. Now the second statement, B statement says that one of the digit is present in the number 718 and is placed correctly. So one of the digit out of this is 718. So two of digit we are getting from this and third digit we are going to get from this. And we are finding that seven, either seven or one or eight. Out of this, one of the digit is correct and it is fixed at its right position. So none of the digit is present in the number 148. And observe and see that it is not one, it is not four, it is not eight. So from B, we can remove one and eight. So we have uh, already reached one value that is seven. So we, from the option, we can get that it is one or two, three and four, it is not going to be the answer. So either one or two is the correct answer. 
So now the fourth one is there. One of the digit is present in the number eight three five and is placed correctly. Eight three five and the is placed correctly. So here we are getting two statement, two information that three five means out of these eight three five. One of the digit is the correct digit, and the digit which is present here is at its right position. So fifth cannot be the digit because it is already mentioned in the statement A that fifth is if it is the digit it is not placed correctly. So fifth cannot be the answer here. Then the third is the option remains eight, which is already denied that it is not be the eight. The three is the correct option. So we got the second because it is also the correct position. So seven three. And nine was the second remaining one, so it will be the answer seven three nine. Now again, one kind of reasoning questions here. It is that three apartments. So we have to follow whenever you are going to solve this question, you have used pen, and this will be more easier when you plot a graph or plot a diagram according to your convention. Okay, or it will be more convenient to reach the answer when you are going to use pen and paper for solving this thing. Three apartments which are in a row means let's see this left, middle, and right. These are the three apartment, and these are occupied by Omar, Ramesh, and John. Omar, Ramesh, and John. These three uh, person are occupying these three apartments. Only one of them is the landlord. Okay, so these three out of these three, one of them is the landlord. Out of one of out of these three, one of them is the landlord. So Ramesh apartment is not next to John's. This is the first statement. And uh, one of the only one of them is okay. Let's check again. What is that? Only one of them is the landlord, and whose apartment is at one end. Means either it is left or right. It is not going to be the means whatever the whoever uh, the landlord. Its apartment is either on the left or right. It is not in the middle. Okay. Now the next statement says that the Miss apartment is not next to John's. Means it is showing that. The Ramesh apartment is not next to John. Whether where whatever the position, Ramesh apartment will not be adjacent to the John's apartment. The apartment on the left is not the landlord's. Means this left apartment will not be the landlord's apartment. The one in the middle is not the Ramesh. So Ramesh uh, apartment is not the middle one, and the one on the right is not John's. So this is not the John's apartment. So we can see that if the John's apartment is not here, okay. And Ramis is not in the middle, so definitely John John cannot be in middle because if John will be in the middle, then Ramis will be at the right or left, and it is already written that Ramis apartment is not next to John's apartment, so definitely John's apartment will be on the left, okay, and Ramis apartment will be at the right, and if the Ramis apartment will be the right. Then we are from this that uh, only one of the um, is the landlord whose apartment is the one end. It shows that the landlord is the Ramesh because its apartment is one end that is right end, and left end it is already uh, stated that it is not the apartment of the landlord. So the Ramesh is the at apartment is the right and it is, he is also the landlord. So next question. It is also very uh, easy question. Uh, the book signing session. There are five authors who write only single author books. Another five who write only in pairs. Every author signs books that are authored or co-authored by him or her. In order to collect signatures of all ten authors in the best possible scenario, the minimum number of books that need to be purchased is. So, what is the question? Is we have to collect all the ten signatures, and out of these uh, ten authors, only five authors. Uh, they are. Uh, five authors they are uh, writing single author book and ten authors uh, five other five authors they are writing in pairs so to get these uh, first five authors single author books we have to uh, definitely purchase five books but to uh, get the authors of the co author books uh, the signature of the co author books we can purchase uh, three books which can contain the six signatures and uh, pairs in the pairs so these five uh, authors can sign three books So maximum you have to five uh, purchase five books for these five signatures, and for another five signature you have to purchase three books because one book can contain two signatures because these authors can uh, are co-authors or writing in pairs. So maximum you can purchase or minimum you have to purchase eight books. Five plus three eight books. So option three is the correct answer. 
here you can see that this is the question in the given abstract, uh, subtraction problem so first thing we have to find uh, the value of r and t the missing numbers so r it is a subtraction 5 minus r we are getting 9 so definitely what is the r value we have to find out okay so first thing uh, we are going to get is the r 5 minus r uh, that is 5 minus means 15 minus r you can say that 15 minus r 15 minus 6 so it will be 9 so wherever r is there so r will be the 6 so we are uh, from the option we are uh, eliminating 2 and 4 because this is not the correct answer because r we already found that it is 6 and we have placed 6 uh, r is equal to 6 and this position and this position now uh, one more thing as the r a and t so a is the Okay, so here we have to find what is the value of A. Again, A value is coming from S is equal to So here we can see that R is equal to 6 and it is 9. But we are getting that S and S at the same scenario and after subtracting we are getting 9. So what is the maximum number we can subtract from S? to the same value, digit, same digit, and we are, we are going to get the nine. So here we are going to get S. So what is the value we are going to consider for this? So we have to find that A is equal to, uh, uh, means either if it is uh, zero, then you can subtract one number here and then it is nine, then 9 then s is already 0 because it is carrying a one remainder so s will be the 0 s s will be the 0 9 so 9 minus 6 or here it is it is not going to be 9 because the s is 0 and it is carrying a one ka value so this value will be the 10 and this one value it is already taken by the 5 so it will be 15 minus 6 9 so it, now it is 9 minus 0 9 so it is 8 minus 6, it is going to be 2. So the here option 6, option 3, the 6 times 2 is the correct option. Now we to the next question. So here you can see that uh, it is a graphical question. So many times uh, people, they are knowing that what uh, are the different types of graph and it is easy and some of them uh, remove uh, some of the standard graphs, y is equal to x, 1 by y is equal to 1 by x. So these are the graphs people remember. But in case you are not remembering the graphs or you are not uh, very much acquainted with these graphs, so what you have to do, you can plot the graphs. Okay, you can take the as equation is given y is equal to x. Okay, so you can pl start plotting the graph. You can put y is equal to zero and what will be the one by x? It will be undefined. Y, y is equal to one, then what will be the one by x? One, then two, one by two, three, one by three, four, one by four. Sorry, it is one by four. Five, one by five. So when you're going to put this value in a graph, you're going to get this type of graph. The graph one, it is showing the correct value, okay? As it is started, when the value, okay, it will go start this way. It will start this way. And when the value of y increase, the value of one by x started decreasing, okay? So this is the thing, this graph will be followed. So graph one is the correct option for this. This is the very easy question and it is a comparative question that uh, the gross domestic uh, products and total population of four countries A, B and C, D in appropriate units are shown. This, this is the graph it is showing that GDP graph and population graph. So these are the four countries A, B, C, D. The, it, uh, the population of these countries and GDP of these countries has, uh, it is completely shown in this graph. And it is asked of with the highest and the lowest per capita GDP of res uh, respectively. So we have to identify the country with is with the highest GDP and the lowest per capita GDP. Okay. So here we can say that the highest GDP is the country A. Other, uh, whereas on the second option A, it is showing the two means uh, unit two is showing. Otherwise, this is the least population. As the population will decrease, the GDP will be higher. Definitely, per capita GDP will be definitely higher because the population will be less. So in this comparison, the, the population uh, 
country A and country D is having the same population. So out of this, these are two having the uh, very low, lowest population, A and D, where in the GDP case, the country A is having the highest GDP. So the country A is going to be the highest per capita GDP. So option one and two is the correct option. Option C and uh, three and four can be eliminated. Now the lowest GDP means the GDP should be the lesser one. So D is the country with the lowest GDP in the uh, option. And in population also, it is having the lowest population, but we can consider other, other option where you can see that the country C is having lowest GDP, whereas the C's population is too high. So if population is higher than GDP, it shows that it is going to have the lowest per capita GDP. So definitely one and C is the correct option. Okay, friends. So these are the questions what we are, have discussed so far in the general aptitude section. Thank you for listening.